Hello everyone, I'm Mars from Text One Networks, and we are happy to have the opportunity to share our research results on the DevCon 29 stage. In this section, we will discuss the ecosystem of ICS and SCADA, and more deeply focus on the Mitsubishi Electric and Communication Protocols. And please allow me to quickly introduce TS1. The TS1 is a subsidiary company under Trend Micro. Uh, we focus on providing cyber defense and visibility for operational technology. And currently, I'm a researcher for TS1 and focus on IoT, ICS, and SCADA, enterprise related security and research research. And host also um, share the many results of my security research at major cybersecurity, major cybersecurity conference such as Red Hat, the Kong Sector, having the Bus Conference, and other major cybersecurity conference. I'm also the general coordinator of the Hacking Taiwan Conference, Hong Kong 2021. And my colleague Selman, uh, Selman very uh, specialized in IT and SCADA protocol processing and Linux kernel programming. He also has both speaking experience at the global conference, such as CyberStack, he can't hack in the bus conference, and also very powerful in the deep ICS research. And today's outline. And first we will discuss modern ICS and SCADA ecosystem. And then move on to the problem of Mitsubishi ecosystem, including to um, the how we how to analyze and successfully take over the entire ecosystem. Because Mitsubishi is not very actively um, facing this issue of our finding, and we will also share the process of our uh, content with Mitsubishi and show why we decided to share our finding based on the public's right to know. And finally, we, also, we will also share to let you know how, how to perform the mitigation. And first one, modern ICS SCADA ecosystem overview. Um, Mitsubishi is the world's uh, third largest industrial control manufacturers by market value, with a, a global market share of the more than 10%. So you will see the top three, and then show very um, powerful percentage in the global market here. And you show ordered by the net annual and sales revenue in the industrial automation status. Mitsubishi is also among the top three, the top three here, you will see here. And at the same time, it is also ranked third among the, uh, the most popular POCs with the, uh, the commercial status analysis. In the private list slide, we, we can see that the Mitsubishi has performed very well in the, the list field. And what we also very interesting about the Mitsubishi ecosystem scope. So let's take a look, let's look at the scope of Mitsubishi PLC series. And Mitsubishi can basically cover any size, system size from small to large. And they provide different levels of a PLC for different system size. So from the picture, the slide you will see um, from small size to large size, the MailSec app, IQ app, LQ, or IQR a little the small to large layer of land that are covered. And also, um, but you will be interested in one more thing is um where are their POCs used? So based on Mitsubishi's official statement and our own observations, uh, Mitsubishi's POC is very um powerful and, and uh, widely in used by a range of verticals, including um, automatic uh, automated it or over um warehoused uh, through a battery, semiconductor, general automation, chemical, FPD, inspection machines, uh, and so of land and including the uh, building automation, um, injection mailing, and printing, machine tools, and, and many more of them are, are used the Mitsubishi POCs. It's very widely used and they cover the over um, critical infrastructure, many infrastructure setups uh, we um, daily use, like our waterways, water, and so on. Uh, and at least very uh, close with our people's life. Um, you, you just image um, whether those um, industries are close, tied in um, to your daily life, if security issues, occupying critical devices, let maintenance less, um, industry. 
and the attacks can disrupt the um, or controller asset. The impact will be very dangerous and very powerful and, and, and huge. So you should take care of this. And also, before we perform this research, uh, we um, reviewed it a, a previous very powerful um, industry of security research, and we noticed uh, something important. Um, almost no one conducted research on this beach. Most of the, the, the related research, research is instead in the focus on Siemens S7. So it was in Brahat, um, 2019, 2017, 2016, 2010, 11. They focus on Siemens devices. Or even they not only focus on Siemens, uh, about uh, some other, other part uh, have nothing to do with the communication protocols like um, ISIS targeted malware or attack vectors in different setters. So we believe this is, um, we revealed it, it of an opportunity to work in deep with the Mitsubishi ecosystems. And also, we also more uh, review the Mitsubishi vulnerabilities. It, it is very important things and we reviewed it and, and, and the has already announced that the vulnerability in, in the pet, in the, in the, in the maybe one year ago, a few, few months ago. Also, this table show some examples, but there are, there are many more. And we have found that most of the population vulnerabilities are only specific devices, modules, cell phones, and do, do not specifically address issues in their communication protocols itself. So now that we have introduced the starting perspective of our research, um, let's take a look of the three different ICS ecosystems. And how does the ecosystem of sustained or uh, critical infrastructure control system look like? Um, our first sample is mobile bus. And you will see the HMI, POC, and your network station of then the use of uh, mobile bus TCT communication. And only the POC and with various devices use the mobile bus RTU or ASCII will usually use a serial line and not based on TCP IP, not based on Ethernet. Ethernet. But uh, they will something different. But folks on the uh, mobile bus TCP, um, they are something different according to the different function implemented by different manufacturers. Or, or license vendors, but basically the native functions are quite limited. And also second sample is Siemens. So in, in Siemens, it provides their own um, private protocol, Siemens S7, S7 Plus, um, has already been strongly landed um, security to a certain extent by applying in deep research from many researchers. So while, uh, well, I, I dare not say that this protocol is secure, but uh, the uh, emphasis uh, on security is already much better in um, com conversation, uh, conversation to other ICS protocols. So, so uh, we will say uh, since Siemens or uh, is a good do a good job for cybersecurity than other ICS vendors. But finally, what about the uh, Mitsubishi? And between HMI and POC, um, it supports a wider range of communication protocols such as SMP, LMP, mobile bus TCP, and Ethernet IP based on different uh, network modules. And in order to support the, the uh, content, uh, content availabilities with a, a variant um, of assets. And from the perspective of attacker, if you can't cut from the HMI, you must understand the various protocols can be used in an attack. But for the POC and the network station, they use the MailSoft. And MailSoft, a private protocol is used to communicate between the network station and the POC. And if someone can tag over MailSoft protocol, they can compromise all major POCs and master the entire ecosystem. And we were able to accurately this. Um, now, to have a front part, um, let's dissect and compromise Mitsubishi ecosystems. So as an attacker, if we can discover a vulnerability in MailSoft, and we can basically take over Mitsubishi ecosystem completely, and we can fake and or forge the engine workstation to pass the command on, on the, the POC, so it does uh, whatever 
we want it to do that. So you can we can figure out exactly with using the mail software uh, protocol to communicate with LFC. And also, yes, mail software have us uh, uh, have uh, authentication mechanism, but this authentication mechanism is not is very very weak. In other words, as long as we can pass the authentication and we can take over everything, and as you can see. Um, this is just uh, a few handshake uh, process between a generic station and PLC you see at the beginning of the entire authentication process and uh, general will and generic station will send a challenge request uh, its message one and um, to the PLC and uh, PLC will return the random 10 byte challenge code to a, uh, a general station and that and the general station AWS will do the calculation based on this 10 byte challenge code and send back the 32 byte code to the POC and then the confirm whatever um, or not if uh, has passed the authentication and um, how we have to do this and what we have to do is to reverse in the reverse the calculation process of these 32 bytes and this is these things we need to do and we want to find out something tricky or something interesting in, in that part. So how can we reverse? Um, there, um, and your workstation software is our gold, and just works two and just works three. Uh, and because they support different um, PLC type and PLC modules, uh, we know from small to large. So you can think of JS Works 3 is the newest and JS Works 2 is older, but you, you can think of this. And let's take this apart. But I will say uh, the, the application is something different in the, the, uh, the some backend services. And so now we will start our reverse engineering in general. Um, but um, there are many, many steps, but they are not, are not too complicated. But um, of then are uh, exchanges between various bits or operations between arrays. Um, after um, receiving the, the random 10 byte challenge code, the first thing is uh, and your station will uh, calculate uh, the, the uh, execution order operation with a uh, challenge code and uh, execution or base text here. And you will see the from the, the array uh, UX4D, blah, 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 here as step one. And they will change the execution buffer place to like uh, change the place. This, so this is step two. And then into the step three, um, they will convert the type buffer to the shafted variable and verify PLC 10 byte challenge code and sum the type buffer. Uh, we believe this, this, this behavior is used to confirm the integrated um, of the 10 bytes challenge codes. Uh, make sure it's not be um, modified by the other people or attacks, so they will calculate this. And after that, they will, um, yeah, and the station will retrieve the four short variable um, to integer variables and then go to the function and sub uh, 62C3E. So go to go, go to uh, deeper to the sub function. Uh, in this moment, we will, I will say uh, there are many, many sub function and, and go to layer, go back layer. So, so, so just um, uh, speed the pace, the patient to, to look at this because there are many, many uh, operations for creating this 32 byte the, 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 the response. So, also in the step six, uh, after land uh, in the function S62C3E, and then we will use the predefined um, 32 byte code to generate the 32 byte hash code. And then you will see the, 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 the predefined 32 byte uh, array here. But I will say this 32 byte array will based on the, the different the POC model yeah, and get a different value. So, you need to um, um, trace it is bound by one. If you want to attack a model, you need to trace a array. Yeah, and also um step seven will um and then to will generate the the sixty four byte output buffers. So you will see the local here and lovely local we put it here. And also um after that it, it just have the conclusions, but after they will generate the the sixty two byte array with the value. You access 36 and for step nine and um, perform the execution word on the first 32 byte and the uh, FCDB array. 
and then jump to the function sub 62A60. So you will see the, uh, the left line of uh, the, the here, here, here. Yeah, so you will see here. Okay, and um, like in a step five, uh, step ten, um, they will generate the uh, go to the, the, the function. Yeah, uh, six two, um, six here, and generate the, the one hundred four bytes array, and copy the value from array here, uh, to the first thirty two byte bytes here. So the, the, the value could be by by the links uh, the variable, but uh, just um. Quickly go through this and then copy the 64 bytes from array, uh, yeah, 100 bytes, and fill the zero in the last eight bytes and show uh, on this table. So you can quickly go, through, you can quickly understand the, the, the 104 byte array of the list, uh, the, the, the including whatever something things here. Also, uh, and then go down to another. Uh, go back to the, the flow sub function 62c38 and jump to um, sub function 62b7b and jump to the sub function 62a9b to handle the last 8 bytes of the um, 100 bytes array and set the last uh, 8 bytes as a uh, 2 integer variable and add the value 0x40. So you will, you will see this. And also after that, uh, we'll do the uh, um, yeah go another after uh, another on uh, um, sub function six two a c seven after um six two a t nine b and they will run the calculation and update the first thirty two bytes of the uh, one hundred bytes array, but it's just a, a huge calculation and you know um just just quickly goes to this. Yeah, because uh, not, not, not very special um, things here. And also, it's the, uh, um the sub function 62b7b again and updated 105 4 bytes array based on the computed challenge code. And for go to the step 50, and it's queued the sub function on um, 62bc6. So you will see go here. And then update the value in of set 0x30 is of set is um 0x80 from the 104 byte array, and add the low of set 0 um um 0x60, and you will see the so many sub function in the uh sub function on uh, s62bc6. So. Uh, and we go down there and uh, to quickly go and point out the list on uh, the function and we, we rename really some um, function to help you understand a lot of uh, things they do this and also uh, yeah in the step 6 uh, function uh, it's a function uh, 62 ACS and they update the 104 byte red buffer from offset on the UX 31 and set the 27 by, uh, 27 bytes to zero and in offset the x uh, 60 at the um, value the x 27 and then to update the uh, um, 104 byte array buffer that means to yeah but we, we will before that um, you will see the 62 ac7 function but we already using the previous previous function so it's used to just update uh, for 32 byte just so we we not duplicate this to repeat this in another part and go down later to step uh, 17 on um, the list function also update the 104 byte array buffer uh, from offset 0x58 set the 4 bytes to 0 and in the offset 0x64 to an uh, integer variable and let it shoot 3 bit and swap it with the offset 0x5c for offset, offset 0x58 uh, here. And and then also still in the uh, same uh, sub function, but uh, we'll jump to another sub function to 62b49 uh, and update to uh, 104 byte array to 136 byte. Yeah, you will see here and the first 32 bytes as a integers and add the 32 bytes 
on offset on the UX of one or four and then swap it. So you will find here. And about the steps 19, the offset of the UX 136, set the, the real X 5C bytes value to the UX 40. The byte already is 200 bytes now. So um, so uh, we will calculate the letter free based on these um the 100 byte note and um step 20 the, the loop uh you will see the loop the for loop um is used to execute words the last 32 byte in the 200 byte array within the output and store into the 200 byte array and the following the, the function is just repeat the same function uh, behavior based on this and just base just use these uh, 200 bytes to calculate it so after all of the calculations and getting the final 200 bytes and the first 32 bytes is the the the, the uh, mail soft authentication function need so the uh, engine works then just uh, catch the first 32 bytes from the final 200 bytes and then send back back to the POC and just uh, can pass the authentication and also at this part, I think um, you already know how to trace mail soft authentication mechanism. But I want to emphasize one thing is uh, network traffic analysis is absolutely indispensable to, to this research because when we do a lot of reverse engineering, but this protocol is network protocol. So you cannot without uh, any um, tools help you to analyze the network traffic. So we believe this, if we combine land, we can totally take over it and more easily. So for this purpose, we build the, the, the Wireshark Lua plugin for the Microsoft protocols. And also we will show this protocol later for our the demo. And we, we can make sure our Lua plugin support the Microsoft and, and can help us to uh, recognize, can understanding the Wireshark, uh, the, the Microsoft protocol. And, and now and we come to the front part. And in our scenario, we want to take over the entire POC means which equals in the right. So we build this scenario is overriding the POC pro and it's our goal because after the bypass authentication, everything we can do that, but we want to override the POC program. It's our goal, just a, a demo, so you can see that. And if we can bypass the authentication and successfully override the PLC program, and we can perform any other function you, we want to perform. And so next, uh, let's look um, how to override the process. So um, here, just um, let us know, let you know how to quickly go through this the, the handshake process. And we will later, we will um, step by step to let you know with the well, uh, uh, with the Wireshark screenshot to describe this the, the function and behavior. So you will see the, the message one is used to send the challenge code and back to the, the 10 byte challenge code from POC in message two and message three will send to send the, uh, the authentication request with the 32 byte on uh, the, uh, the, the challenge code. Uh, the, the, the result to the POC and pass the notification. So after message four, an attacker can do anything they want to do. And you like the remote stop, but here just if you need to uh, override the POC program, you, you need to the uh, remote stop first and open the, the file and search the file and read the, the POC program file here. And after that, you need to write uh, the data, the, the, the data the byte you want to write to the file. So with the, the message 13. And after that, update the file site with message 50, and change, modify the file creation, the data and time to close file, and write the file modification to storage. After that, you're already done with the, uh, the file operation. And then you just need to remote route. You can um, run the, 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 the POC program you which you replace it. So. Here is this uh, totally um, handshake process. Quickly go through this, just keep in mind, and you will know our whole process is like this. And next, we will use the Wireshark screenshot for follow up detail and step by step. So, the first uh, the message we want, the engine workstation will send to the POC, the, 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 the challenge code, the X, uh, the UX5A for the UFF to get the challenge code. It's a, it's a fixed number, it's a fixed value, and, and never, never changed. 
and when PLC receive this, it will uh, generate the 10 bytes uh, random challenge code to the engine workstation. And engine workstation will, our fake engineer workstation will calculate the 32 bytes of payload um, of that. You, you will see here, you will see here. So, so we'll, we'll um, rep uh, uh, payload to the PLC. And when PLC receive this uh, 32 byte payloads and will uh, calculate it and then pass those location. So after that, if the message for the error coding message for the is four zero 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 is main, mainly a uh, success. If it is another value and also location failed. So after that we saw that we see that it is very exciting because we successfully to 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 pass those location. And then from the message five, the attack can do anything we want to do. So we do the uh, remote stop uh, with the this function code because we want to override the PLC program. So you, you need to stop the PLC, PLC now. You can operate the program, right? So get function code zero 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 for the and then you can send the request to you want to open the PLC program file, but you don't know where is PLC program file where. So you you send another command is you want to find, you want to search this uh, file, this uh, file, you will see that he want to search a man.qpg uh, PLC program file here. Okay, so get a response and then send a request to uh, message 11 to read file, you want to read the, the, the PLC program file of man.qpg and get a response, successfully read, successfully read and send the mail soft request with the uh, message 13. You want to write uh, your data to file, and this 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 message repeat you twice because it's based on the um your data how big your data you want to write into the file. But we want to replace, we want to override the PLC program. So here, just so like this. Uh, so we will keep two twice to uh, file one, file two, and get the, the successfully um error code and. And center the, the update the, the another function code. We update the file size because you already change the files and files that need to be changed. And then we send the message uh, searching to modify the file creation date and time of the uh, of the list list, list filed. Okay, and send a close file. So. You already close file. Meanwhile, is you already write all data you want to write to the PLC program down, and modify the, the uh, write to the file uh, modification to the storage. Get that error uh, for you again. And now you can remove the run. You can run the program, and if you run it, you can uh, successfully to run the PLC program. You override it. So that is a successfully. Now we show another demo of our um, demo for of these procedures. So this demo will uh, just uh, show a whole process of our um, privacy life for overriding PLC programs. And in the normal status, um, here he, he, he is a uh, normal running. Everything is, is normal, good light of PLC running. And in our attack scenario, we override an empty PLC program. So, uh, up, uh, download this PLC program to PLC will make the PLC to the stop operations data because it's a uh, the empty PLC program. But also, if you want to modify specific um, um, point of the PLC, and you can change this. So in here you will see uh, the PLC already be stopped because we update we we download the the MPLC program to the PLC. So also you will see here if we use the like, workstation to view the the PLC program, and you will see before uh, we override the PLC program, it look like this is very normal status and every lady logic lady logic is is very normal. After we override it, it's empty. Totally empty, so we can uh, uh real and make huge um some impact on this site. If you you can change everything you want to do, but how about the uh the potential impact on these attacks? And if you when we use the mail software protocols and according to our survey, we know 
generally speaking, uh, of PLC uh, series uh, of Mitsubishi will impact by the Microsoft protocol because they use Microsoft to communicate between analog station and the PLC. Also, some new list uh, PLC without the need to uh, Microsoft authentication. But if you know attack know the Microsoft protocol, they can take over the devices directly. It's very easy. And also, uh, we will say other people will study um, you know, like SLMP protocols, and we will say it's just a small part. And also, we will discuss the um, issue later because we will share our reporting uh, the vulnerability process with Mitsubishi. And also, the potential impact on, of the attack using the Microsoft protocols. So not only um, many things you can do, either like remote run, remote stop, or to like, interrupt the process, or you can override the previous program like us. Or you can write a read the specific data to change the small part uh, control process. And also um, you can more do the malicious file in the POC and get it to the PL file. So we, what we know you will um, something um, not understanding about it. So we provide a common baseline based on the monitor data matrix for ICS. And basically the impact we can achieve is by taking over the mail soft protocol is rich. And depending on what the attacks want to achieve. So you will see the, the, the part uh, is including the including the um, manipulation of control, denial of control, and loss of control of land are uh, including with our attack scope. So now, um, as, as we mentioned before, we say uh, Mitsubishi is not very active uh, facing this issue. So we want to highlight because it's not a problem only for Mitsubishi. Other pro other vendors we contact, we may we meet also have some uh, this um, attitude to very uh, not not very active to, uh, attitude to the handle of vulnerabilities. But we want to highlight it. Just we we, we want to keep everyone know vulnerabilities is very serious things. So here is our timeline for we got our first paid uh, from the vendors. So uh, on May 30, 2020 is this the first time the vendor repaid and when we notified that. And in, in the vendor repay said uh, the authentication process we point out is not a is not to protect the customer's security but to prevent connection to devices of other companies. And more planning it is uh, that it is not a vulnerability from the vendor side, from the uh, vendor perspective. But however, regardless of the original purpose, this authentication process does has have problems. Attackers can use it well to perform the various operations. Our research shows how this is a serial risk so we know the vendor don't think um, this is not a PDB, it's like a feature um, just prevent the other vendors connection, but we don't think so. And after um, the vendors uh, first repaid, we write back the, the, the lecture, the message to let them know um, why we think this is a vulnerability and this is very serious and just how we find it. Big. And as well as how it can be exploited. So in this part, and we say this is unfair, bad, and we will want to highlight it and point out um, we can successfully bypass this authentication. We can make some impact. Um, you should know as a vendor, you should have uh, some security awareness of this. You should not avoid it. And also, it is a part of our second time repair. We want to uh, also explain what happened when the uh, uh, authentication is not passed. And basically we think this is need to be addressed and things like to uh, lead to the uh, very serious dangers when the intruder exploited it. So here, okay, and the vendor declined uh, a lot part because we highlight the scope from Microsoft and SLMP and they say SLMP does not require the authentication. Yeah, uh, after our Notification, it is not required authentication of um, SSMP. I would like to point out this one point thing is this is not actually more dangerous without authentication between HMI and POC. And attack can easy to attack POC. 
I know there is a legacy protocol usually you see for uh, this protocol for ICS offline are not uh, securely designed. But it, I think it's, it's not a reason for you know the uh, folks on this not 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 build not face the, the security issue. And these functions have the, uh, some limitation compared with mail software. So we will say the uh, SMP is a subset uh, of mail soft and we can provide attacks um, with a richer resource to, to compromise devices. And also it's, also it's a part of our, on some classroom we want to uh, yeah, uh, 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 render uh, repairs. And um, here we are uh, set uh, less time, uh, less time or repaid. Uh, basically we want to lay out the, how much information we have access to the, the exploit. Uh, uh, for fraudulent and station, we can succeed to read and write everything we want and should not, this behavior should not be uh, used by the unauthorized the user or attacks to do this behavior. And so we will say, uh, yeah, if if we cannot upload this some new material, we still judge, we still want to highlight the, the issue and not compare with SRMP because we, this is independent. SRMP is SRMP and Microsoft is Microsoft. But, but they say, yeah, it, it is in IQR series, uh, it is possible to use SRMP to operate a man on uh, that QVG and just as possible to operate uh, to project any organization. So they say, yeah, um, our SRMP is not, it's support uh, user to operate the, the PS program file, but the SMP uh, without the authentication. So everything can do that. So no security issue. It's, 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 it's very, yeah, you know, uh, we, unbelievable, but we know this is uh, the vendor's uh, perspective because manufacturers, uh, it, it's, it's different with the security guys. So also, then DDI decided to close this uh, case because the vendor um, finally and totally did not recognize this is a vulnerability, but we think this is a vulnerability. And after a few days, because uh, we also, um, in, in here, we also uh, send our, uh, um, we, we, we want to procedures, uh, we want to uh, uh, let, uh, let people know, uh, we, we want to share our finding to other people to in a cybersecurity conference. So uh, I forgot, uh, uh, vendor, vendor say, uh, yeah, we, another, we receive another repay from vendors. And hoping that we will uh, indicate it um, in the first say, a uh, this is, is not a vulnerability. This issue is not a vulnerability. It needs to be issue brought us. So of course, um, yeah, yes, we, we respect the vendors are uh, serious because we know we we can only understand that the vendors is not easy. They need to build their also huge systems, so huge devices. But uh, we know that some com conflict uh, with the, the security uh people and uh, manufacturers so we, we respect the vendors i have to say that and so we, we, will, we will say so uh we, we say this is conflated uh, with the security perspective and the manufacturers so perspective so this issue is not a vulnerability in these big products from vendors perspective but we still hope that this issue can be remedied before it leads to the problem for work side Skate holders. So for the other reason, and let's take a look how to get this issue. Okay, so uh, there are short term and, and medium to long term. For short term, you need to uh, mitigate your environment. You need to detecting. You need to protecting your ICS and SCADA protocols. Even there are uh, legacy protocol. There are uh, security in this side, but you should um, try to protect your environment. Um, basically, some sometimes um, um vendors cannot patch it, or vendor would not patch because they may want to deliver new versions, maybe. And also, uh, for this reason, uh, only for mail software we focus on this. So we provide a little plugin for analyze mail software protocols, and we also provide a snow reward. It is IDS new world, IDS IPS reward, and for open source, and that can help to you to detecting and to prevent protecting mail software traffic. So. So like this, uh, here is our rule set. Um, you, you can just copy this to your snow rule list 
and the long leg and like can help you to detect it to protect you in some specific um you know soft uh, communication like um you know, soft notification remote stop remote run or write to file some of this behavior and also you can sh check this is help to oh yeah our rule is is is, is useful and also um last part is uh yeah the uh, maybe uh maybe to learn to uh complete planning to we want to help you to think think uh yeah we know the ISIS vendor usually don't have the security awareness. We face many many ISIS vendors. They, they usually don't have the, the security awareness. OT guys, ISIS vendors, ISIS manufacturers, they don't have the, the security awareness. So I think the, the first thing you should be with the security awareness. And you can you should know uh, try to build your defense and deep environment from the outside, like a simulate the attack. From the outside, like what, what they want to do and how to you how you build your uh, the secure environment from outside with uh, some some security devices, the firewall, I guess maybe, uh, but they still still based on your environment, and also uh, do this uh, uh security design in the protocol or other components from inside, so it's based on the ISIS vendors. Uh, they they need to they should be the uh, uh do the security design. That prevent the vulnerability happening in the, their their components or service, because other people power water they use will be uh, the, the, the more secure, and then you can secure your ISS and scale ecosystem more secure in the future. And of we said in OT guide they they always they say the top priorities keep the operation running. Yeah, we believe, but we we more believe is in the near future you should keep your operation securely running. Because attack is the, the, the attacker is more and more, and uh, they try to decompromise the more and more critical infrastructure environment. They we, we cannot overlook it. We we should take it make a serious point part. So that is my presentation, and thank you for listening. And if you do have any questions, and welcome and contact me with Twitter or with the Tech website, and we are welcome. And thank you for listening again. Thank you.